Running ads on Etsy can be scary. You're putting money into it and telling Etsy, hey, here's my hard worked money, spend as you wish. Unlike Facebook ads or Google ads, you don't really have much control over your audience targeting. And in this video, I'm going to show you two ways that you can control the audience targeting when running an Etsy ad. So method number one, you are going to start with your best listings. You're going to run ads on listings that are already optimized and making sales. Now you're gonna be like, but why? These listings are already bringing sales organically. They are converting organically. Why would I wanna spend money on that? Because, and I'm gonna tell you right now, one, your listing is on point, okay? The description, the images, your keywords, they are effective. If you are making sales on this, when people come in, they search for a product that they're looking for, they click on your listings and they are buying it, it means that your audience is targeted. Your listing optimization has brought in the right customers who are purchasing. So why focus on running ads on those listings? Because it's already a proven success. A listing that's already selling well indicates that everything about it is working correctly from the product itself to the way it's presented. Number two, when you have higher conversion rates, your ads are more likely to yield better results. That way you make your ad spend more efficient. You're not losing money on that listing. Okay, so that's method number one. Okay, you want to run ads on your optimized converting listings. Number two, I'm gonna show you a way that you can turn off keywords that are completely irrelevant to your listing that way Etsy will not be putting that in front of those customers looking for that kind of product, okay? So this is my Etsy dashboard. I haven't really been running ads for the past couple of weeks, but I do have some data in here that I'm going to show you how to turn it off. Now, remember, keep in mind, this will only work if you have been running ads already and you have collected data and then you can do the optimization. So scroll all the way down and then here you are going to see the listings. Then here is all your information on those listings. You can click over here, sort by higher to lower. You can do views, clicks, click rate, orders, revenue, spend, and ROAS. It means returning on ads spend. This big number here does not mean that Etsy is spending your budget, okay? The Etsy is putting in front of all of these people, but then, these people here are clicking on your listing and therefore spending your ad budget. So all of these people from all, everybody here, 3.5% of the people are clicking on it and then they are placing orders. Now, how do you know if you are making money on this listing? By the ROAS, the returning on ad spend. Anything below one, you are losing money. Anything above one, you're making money. So let me go ahead and click over here. It's 2.8. I haven't been optimizing everything as it should. This, this number here should be much higher, but for every dollar that you put in, you get, you know, 2.98 um, dollars on top of this. Here is in, for any dollar that I put, I get 44 cents and so forth and so on. So the higher the number, the better. And then here you can select if you want to turn ads on or off on these listings right here. There are two goals for running ads. One, making money, of course, right? Who doesn't want to make money? <laughs> Number two is collecting data. Any decision made based off of data is a smart decision, okay? So, of course, you don't want to lose money on ads, but it's okay to break even, especially if you're doing digital products. There is no material cost, there's no shipping cost, there's none of that. So it's okay to break even. It's a sale you know, that you wouldn't have had anyways if your ads weren't on. You're not making money, but you're not losing money, so you're breaking even. But now you have this amazing data behind it that one, can help you improve your listings and two, can help you create new products because you can see what people are searching for. So use this also as a market research. I'm gonna show you this social media planner. Uh, so I'm gonna click here on the detail stats, okay? Now this has been running for a while. I have enough data to make uh, smart decisions on this. So when you click on that, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna click on here, searches that led to this ad. 
Now keep in mind, it will only show the last 30 days of data. So keep in mind, run ads for 30 days, come back and analyze your data before you lose it. I can't stress this enough. It's really important to so make sure that you are coming back here. Now here's a little trick for you. And you're gonna like copy all of this, okay? Control C, go to ChatGPT, paste this, and be like, please table this results. The table should have this format. Buyers searched for, and I'm gonna put like this to sort it. Views, clicks, and orders. And then I'm gonna go back to Etsy. I'm gonna take a screenshot just of this part right here. I'm gonna put that into ChatGPT. See, it's uploading over here. And then I'm gonna be like, I attach an image for reference. And then click enter. So you have all the keywords here, like randomly formatted. ChatGPT is analyzing it. And then it gave me a table on the way everything is in there. So ChatGPT already created a table for me. You can come over here, click download table. It will download as CSV file. Then you can uh, open a spreadsheet, you go to file, import, and then you're gonna upload, and then you're gonna get the table that ChatGPT just gave you. To select uh, replace spreadsheet, and then you click import data. Now you have all of your information right here. Just title search terms Etsy ads, okay? And then you come back with time, and then you have all this information still here. Repeat that every every 30 days, you know, that you're running ads. Um, and this is just for this. And then you can create new tabs on the spreadsheet for like all your other listings. And then here, I don't know if I show you this, but for this one, for example, when you go to detail stats and then you see orders that came from this ad, you can see here that this order, somebody clicked on my ad, they ordered this, but they also ordered an Etsy book camping template. So in this case, I got lucky that it was somebody that has an Etsy shop. But what you wanna do, you don't have to niche down your shop to one specific niche, but what you wanna do, you wanna target like an audience. In this case, the audience is social media you know, content creators. So you wanna make sure that you have at least 10 different listings for that audience. Right? So they came in through the ad and they saw your social media planner spreadsheet and they loved it. You wanna have it in your listing, in that specific list, you wanna have like an image that says, hey, you might also like, and then you put your related listings. So for example, you have you know, a Canva template, a Reels template, Stories template, Post and Carousel templates, right? You have all of this content for that audience, right? So they can come in and then they can even add like, link your listings in that in this specific listing that you're running ad or you could also link a section to your shop so that way when they click in there it's going to bring them to that section in your shop that has everything for social media content creators and then they can add a bunch of listings to their shopping cart and they can buy just make sure that you're giving also them like a some sort of discount for like bundling items you know uh, maybe like buy three get one free or buy three, save, you know, 30% or something like that. So make sure you're giving them an incentive to purchase more. Now, my shop wasn't optimized at the time I ran these ads. Um, so that way, you know, I got lucky that they bundled something in here, but like I have nothing else, literally, this is like my best listing for the ads and I have nothing else for content creators. So here are the, 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 terms that people are searching for and Etsy is bring, putting that in front of your audience. And again, you want to turn off terms that have nothing to do with your listing. Like people searching for content creator SVG is not searching for a spreadsheet. Could they be interested? Sure. Are they going to purchase? Probably not right now. <laughs> so you want to turn this off. Um, and again, I have zero uh, clicks, so it's not really, you know, dipping into my budget. So it kind of is irrelevant for now, but if this was, for example, like this person, they were looking for a content calendar for Facebook. So five people viewed it, one person clicked. So for this tag, 
this is a good click rate but then they didn't purchase which means this is an idea for a product right maybe i'll take this listing and i will just change the thumbnail and i'll be like hey facebook content creators here's a spreadsheet for you i'll use this keyword content calendar for facebook creators and then all of a sudden you need to change your tags and all of a sudden you're target targeting a whole different audience right maybe they don't want to use instagram maybe they're just specifically looking for something for facebook anyways i don't want to make this too long but this is how you do this and again just make sure you run through your content through your search terms uh, for example this one content calendar excel are turned off because this is not an excel this is a google sheet uh, and again could they come and be like oh instead i want you know google sheets instead of excel but this was such a specific thing. somebody that types in excel they are looking probably 90 percent chances they're looking for something excel only right otherwise they would just type spreadsheet so just keep that in mind and go ahead and again this is trial and error see what works for you i hope this was helpful thanks for watching